All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Sean Lowry Show podcast. I have an awesome guest today, Emily O'Brien. She's the founder of Comeback Snacks Popcorn. So good. It's criminal. That's your tagline, right? That's right. I like it. Yeah. You are, you call yourself a, a contrepreneur. <laughs> I saw titled, yeah. <laughs> I saw that and I love that. I love stories of people who uh have have good stories, but that like had some bad things they had to overcome in their life. Mm -hmm. Um so why don't you uh, uh just tell the listeners like a little bit about your story and then we'll get into the uh all the popcorn stuff. Sure. So I grew up in Hamilton, Ontario, which is like a town about an hour west of Toronto. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I went to university, had a great family, great parents, upbringing. I was always going to camps and sports, pretty high energy kid. But uh, I was also a pretty quiet kid. Um, I was kind of a tomboy, so I didn't really have like the girly, girly friends. And then I never really talked to like that many guys, but I just love sports. <laughs> and so when I got to high school, I kind of became more feminine, but I didn't know how to like socialize. And so I got into kind of the the cold 45 and the, the fireball whiskey to nice. start. <laughs> and then, um, that kind of took me down like a pretty, pretty, I wouldn't say a bad path, but a teetering on the edge kind of path. And I okay. went to a lot of fights with my parents. Um, but I still managed to always get good grades and I still always had jobs. Like I also really loved working at a very young age. Like I quickly learned that my mother's like a dollar allowance. <laughs> I'm going to cut it for what I wanted to to buy for myself. You can't you know, get a lot of fire. Can't get a lot of fireball for a dollar. Yeah. Or like lip smacker or <laughs> whatever I wanted that week. And so I always, yeah, I had a very like working mindset, but I also had a very like social mindset. And when those two kind of worlds collide, you can kind of find yourself for me. I kind of found myself into a little bit of trouble. Um, but anyways, I graduated high school with, with, uh, honors, got into university or college. And then, um, same thing in university, you know, I always got good grades, got, had jobs. Like I had got a really good job at the end of third year and managed to like, you know, just make double digits and thousands, like, like 20,000 nice. bucks I made in a summer working on a golf course. And that's when nice. I realized I was like good at marketing and talking to people. And so I kind of started to hone in on my skills. And then after I graduated, I, um, took, I traveled a lot cause I always like loved traveling and I would, I wouldn't buy a lot of clothes. Like I would go to like consignment stores and buy like secondhand clothes. I was a really good like, <laughs> and stuff. So I spent all my money on travel because I just thought it was so eye opening and I could learn and, and immerse myself in different cultures because I thought it was, there was just so much beauty in, in exploring the world and also cultivating kind of like a less selfish energy, like sometimes that we find in North America. And so after that, I, I came home and I was like, okay, no, now what am I going to do? After all this traveling, I worked for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and ended up moving to Toronto after working a, a corporate job. And I just did not do well behind a computer. <laughs> <laughs> understood. Understood. Yeah. And then I started a, um, a social media company downtown Toronto because I, everyone really liked the way that I shared my stories and my openness. And yeah, clearly you were, you were talented and smart. And it seems like this isn't the story of someone who ends up getting in a lot of trouble. It seems like you were, you were smart, you were hardworking, you are social, mm -hmm. getting a good job. Everything seems to be going pretty well at this point. Mm -hmm. And then like, I started to kind of with that, with this new business that I started, I'd noticed like the environment that I was in, there was also like a lot of cocaine and I liked cocaine. Like I'm not going to say I hated the drug. Like it wasn't yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, Oh, I was sad. And I did cocaine. Like, no, I partied because I liked to be in that environment. Yeah. Like it didn't start off bad. Right. Um, so I think there's a lot of confusion around like, Oh, people that use drugs or substances, it's like, they're always sad. There's always something wrong. And that, that wasn't true. Like it was just like, I wanted to like enhance the night or whatever. I mean, I get um, it. I mean, cocaine's like, that's a, that's an upper, like the, you think of the Wolf of Wall Street mentality. Like, yeah, it's not just like sad stuff. It's like, let's go, let's rock, let's party, let's make deals. Let's, let's get it. Like, and I yeah. got those deals I, and I was really good at it, but I was under the illusion that I had to do those, be in those environments to get that done. Okay. And so it kind of became, instead of more of just like an accessory, it became more of a habit. And then once things kind of went wrong in my personal life, like there was a, a thing with my family and so I just kind of used it to medicate and that's when the problems like mm. really, really started. And I kind of started to lose motivation for my work. I also like was in just all these like promiscuous relationships. I didn't really care or like really value myself. And 
So I met this one guy through work who actually like kind of treated me a little bit differently. He was really kind and sweet. And he didn't like, it was like, just like that typical bro, you know? And I was like, okay, this is like, maybe this is like actually something different. Right. And we did some business together, which was, which was good until like his checks started bouncing, but we were also kind of involved at this point. And I really trusted him. So I was like, okay, like what's going on? Right. All these like red flags kept showing up. Like he would buy me things that I didn't really ask for. Um, <laughs> like a TV. Like I was like, why are you buying me this TV? Like I don't watch TV. He got me like um, a, a watch with no battery in it. And it's just like really shady. <laughs> okay. But then again, under the illusion that, you know, maybe this is like a good one and like, I should just put those weird things aside and, right. and good qualities. Right. Right. And um, so this goes on for a couple of months, just like the shadiness. And I've just about had it with this guy. Um, just because I was like, listen, I, you kind of still owe me money for the business and, he's like okay like you know what i'm really really sorry like can i come over tonight and talk to you i'm like okay come over and then he comes over he's like um so i really want to go on this trip and like you deserve it you you like earned it you know i'm sorry like um so i want to go to puerto rico with you and it started out as puerto rico i swear to god and i'm like okay cool that sounds fun like a vacation yeah like a vacation sounds fun right (laughs) and like i've traveled with with partners before it's not like this was someone i didn't know right Right. or like the thought right so it's not like it was like oh i met this guy at the bar last night now we're going away (laughs) it was like i'd known him for you guys were you 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 were dating per se right you know in a couple months yeah 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 (laughs) and then so he's like oh but there's just like one thing that i have to do uh when i'm down there and he's like oh but and you can do it you can do it too and i was like (laughs) what the heck are you talking about he's like oh like i have to like bring some drugs back (laughs) And I was like, okay, buddy, like, absolutely not. Like, he knew that I traveled before and he knew that I was kind of a free spirit and he wanted to like get me away from the, from the substances and and the alcohol and and everything like that. So I actually thought he had my best interest in mind, except when he put that question on me. So I said like, (laughs) no, absolutely not. And I was just like, okay, where is he even getting this idea that I would even do this, anything like this from? Yeah. (laughs) So and, he left. Would you like bring it back on like the uh, like a, a public plane? Yeah. It seems like a, a hard task. <laughs> yeah, I know. Considering uh, a terrible liar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. That does not help. Um, and so I said no, and then he like left. you super embarrassed. And so he's like, and then I, he texts me. He's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry. Like I feel like such an idiot. Like you don't like. I can't believe I even brought that up. Like it's right. so dumb. But he's like, but let's still go on this trip. And okay. he's like, don't worry, there'll be no funny business, like nothing at all. Like, I swear to God. And then when we get back, like I'll I'll be able to to get the checks, like I'll have the checks prepared that I owe you, whatever. Okay. When we're away. Okay. Like, okay. Cool. So he's got, you know, he's got like a bunch of money of mine that's owed to me. And I'm like, okay. He's kind of kind of got me on a on a hook there. Right. And then I said, okay, if you're sure, like let's let's go. And then he um, asked me for my passport information because he was going to book the tickets. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to pay for it, whatever. I said, okay, like, I'm sure lots of couples book tickets on one credit card. Like, yeah. it's not like that's that unusual. No. Nah. <laughs> and so he books the tickets and we're like leaving, honestly, two days later. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm leaving in two days. <laughs> for a week. Two days pass and we go to St. Uh, so we go to the airport and then we... um get to like the ticket place. And then I find out that we're not actually going to St. Lucia we're, or we're not actually going to Puerto Rico. We're going to St. Lucia. And then I was oh, like, I no. thought we were going to Puerto Rico. And he's like, no, no, it must've just been your drinking. And he's like, I told you to do this the whole time. And when I was on the plane, I was like looking through the text and it said Puerto Rico. And he's like, Oh, sorry. Like, sorry. Like I, I messed up. I messed it's up. a, it's a big difference. Like it's a different place. Like I never uh, even heard of St. Lucia in my life. And so I, <laughs> he wanted me to basically tell people that I was going to Puerto Rico. Ah, well, time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we get down on the, so I'm like, okay. And I, I was like, okay, don't tell, call me dumb. Cause the reason I do cocaine is so I can be alert and listen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, anyway, so we get down there three days later, like the first three days are fine. Like harmless, you know, obviously there's, there's drinking. There's, he actually like got me cocaine, which is weird. <laughs> it wasn't even real cocaine. It was like, 20 percent pure i don't even know what it was but it definitely okay. much. what did you just get it from like were you thinking he just got it from some guy on the street that's like giving it to tourists like canadian yeah, american tourists guy on the resort right okay. and then um, three days later he's like okay don't go down to the pool today 
because um, our friends are coming to pick us up and you know, you know, we're here to work. Right. Mm. And that's because he like completely switched his, his demeanor. Jeez. And then he acted like, he's like, I told you this was happening, blah, 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 blah. Um, and he's like, they already have like your information. Like I already told them that you were doing it and just kind of flipped it on me that it was like my drinking and, and my fault for agreeing to it. And now that I had to do it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't sound like it makes any sense. I mean, you weren't you're stupid. You were knew what was going on, but I guess he had you on the hook and he got you in there. So, all right. So now you're, you're in the situation the now. It's not a crime to like actually believe the best in people. No, not at all. Not right? at all. No. So I'm like, okay, like maybe I'm just going in the car. Like, I don't know what this is going to entail. And we get picked up at these people that I don't know and like an old car. And I'm like looking out the windows, but like not really. Cause it's not like I'm scared yet. Like I'm not okay. like, Oh my God, I have to do this. And I'm going to die. Like I wasn't afraid at that point because I still didn't actually know what I was going to have to do a hundred percent. But you knew like, you were doing, you knew you were doing some type of business at this point. Yeah. Okay. I knew I was there to like work with him. Okay. But I didn't like, I didn't really believe what my role would actually be. Like I was just like, there's no way. Okay. You know? And so we go on this, go in this car ride with him to this house. And then we go in and there's a lady there. She's very nice to me. And she like, she's like, okay, I'm going to take your measurements. And she's like, thank you so much for doing this. You know, like so-and-so he actually like owes money or whatever. And I was like, okay. And I look at him and he's just looking at me like, like I can't even describe the look on his face. It was kind of like, I told you so, but a sorry look at the same time. That yeah. Makes sense. That makes sense. Kind of like, Hey, I, this is, could work out. This could be great. I, I know like I dragged. I, it, I know I dragged into this. Know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. All yeah. right. And so then I have to go to the mall with this woman and these two other people and shop for a dress that I'm supposed to be wearing because I guess they're gonna be designing like a customized set of underwear for me, kind of like Spanx. Okay. Like, I call them, like Spanx for smugglers because they have like a little kangaroo pouch in the front. <laughs> this is like a movie. This is this is yeah. crazy. Yeah. And then a, like a pouch in the back. And that's when I find out like, yeah, I'm actually going to be bringing two kilograms of co cocaine on the plane with him. He's, it's not just me, but, um, like he's got some on his body as well. Yeah. But we don't that's leave that day. Like we just like plan it all in the middle of the week. Okay. And then we have two days until we have to leave again. And so those next two days, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, Still thinking I'm gonna get away with it. I'm like, listen, I'm not. I'm not a good liar. Like, I'm. I'm really, honestly, I'm not good at this. He kept like trying to tell me things that would calm me down. Like, oh, like the people in St. Lucia already know that you have it, and you know I've done this so many times before, and and blah blah blah. And if nothing will happen, but if it happens, you know, like it's not not your fault. Don't worry. Um, just anything to calm me down because I was like kind of getting frantic. But I also masked that franticness by just going out by myself. Like I literally just left the hotel and I would just like drink by myself. Like I went to karaoke, <laughs> went to karaoke by myself. St. Lucia's beautiful vacation spot, right? I'm sure there's a lot of fun things to do there to take your mind off it. Right. Yeah. And just like praying that like, I wouldn't have to do it. <laughs> um, he didn't really like want me on my computer. And then like, when I got back from going out the first time by myself, he like was like obviously stressed out. He thought like maybe like, she's telling someone. And, yeah. Yeah. Um, so the final day, like, and people are like, oh, like, why didn't you tell anyone? Like, why didn't you say anything? It's because it's like, and then he, his like former partner, because I guess he was still with this other woman, was messaging oh, me. Oh, she knew that I was somehow knew that I was down there, so I was just like freaking out completely, and I didn't want to be like try to sabotage some operation in a foreign country. Like, I didn't know how to get home. Like, I just, right. I just honestly wanted to go home. Right. And I thought that by the best way, because even if I told people in Canada, like, all oh, this is happening, whatever. Like what power do they have? Like, what do they do? Like, not really. This, there's still so much corruption. And at the end of the day, I still only had like the choice, but to just trust him that I could right. get home. Completely. Right. Oh, so, it wasn't. And clearly, about and clearly this operation must have a, had worked at some point in the past. I'm sure, I'm sure people can pull this off sometimes or else they wouldn't do it. Like, yeah. And I wasn't much of a hardball. Like, right. I'm not a gangster. Like, you know, <laughs> like, you know like I, 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 I just wanted to go home. Right. Honestly, and, and I thought about my family and I thought about the repercussions of potentially, you know, being stubborn. And I, I was like scared. Like, I don't know what they would do to me. Like I would, I didn't, I didn't know. Right. And so the one thing that I did know was that if I just did it, I could at least attempt to get home and I would at least get out of the country. And so on that final day, like we got on the airplane and I was completely sober that day because we left early and I was actually kind of glad that I was sober because when I'm sober, I'm even 
like a more terrible liar. Like it's easier to lie when you're drunk, but like, I think when you're sober, it's a lot harder to lie. And I feel like this was just like a blessing because like my body could not hide the signs of like stress and discomfort. And I told him, I was like, I'm a terrible actress. Like I'm, I've never done this before. Like I'm going to fail. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's a good trait. You're honest. You're real. Like I'm not a good liar either. And people that yeah. are good liars, they're either actors or they're like, it's usually not a good trait to be a good liar. So it's a good yeah. trait that you have. Yeah. And you knew that you were aware. Yeah. And so, so finally on the last day, he tells me, okay, okay. You're clearly like, really, you don't want to do this. And, but for some reason I still had to for him or whatever, his, his debts or I'll never really know the true story. Like whatever. Cause there's just so many lies. Right. Um, so I get on this plane and then he tells me, okay, you can take it off once we land at, at Pearson international and take it off in the bathroom, put it in your backpack. Cause I had a backpack. And, and give me the backpack and I'll, ca- I'll carry the backpack through customs. And I, like, mm. I was like, okay, this is like a little bit of relief. At least like I'm still doing something really bad, but at least I don't have to look someone in the eye right? And when they're grilling me because like yeah. I, I'll crack. Right, right. <laughs> and it's not just like signs in your face that like show that you're lying. It's like other signs too, like your whole body, you know, like right. the way you walk, um, like just like, Things you do with your hands, like it's where just, your it, I feel like it's just a, a heavy feeling, like it's just heavy, and it just shows. Like, I feel like it's probably not the hardest thing to pick out if you if you are. Especially if you're like, a trained federal agent, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This kind of thing, <laughs> and you're coming from like a hot spot with someone you've never traveled with before. And, right, right. Like, there's so many other uh, ways that I found out, like how you know they they kind of pick up on these kinds of things. But anyway, so I'm at this point, I'm like, okay. I get to take it off. Okay. This is, this is some relief. At least I'll be like disassociated from him. I didn't know. I didn't know he had it or something like that. Yeah. And so we land at Pearson and I'm like ready to go to the bathroom. And then I'm like, I'm like, there it is. And he looks back at me. He's like, Oh, it's too late now. <laughs> and I was just like, my loyalty to him ended there because I was just like, I hate you so much. But my <laughs> loyalty to like what I was trying to do, which was get home safely did right. not. End. So I, did the best, like, again, like I didn't want to be responsible for sabotaging an operation. Like if I was like, they did this to me and like did cause this whole scene, right. then he would have like said, Oh, it was definitely her fault. Like she ruined right. it. And right. then that's even more dangerous. So I just right. kind of walked through security and then they fill out a little form for you and they like put a number on it that like, doesn't really say anything. Like you don't know what it means until you have to go through the second checkpoint. And then the officer looks up at it. He's like, Oh, you got to go to the secondary. And I'm like, Hey, this is it. Like surprise, surprise. Like so why if, am I if you, if you made it through here, you're home free. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then I get grilled by the officers. They separate us like immediately. And the officer asked me like pretty like harmless questions. Like, Oh, what's your name? What, what do you do? And then they get into like, you know, the nitty gritty. And they asked me about my substance use. And they're like, oh, do you like to do drugs? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, I couldn't even lie about that. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to lie. And they're like, oh, what did you do? And I was, I was in Vegas. So I, was, I think I was in Vegas like three weeks prior to that for a bachelorette or something. So I was like, oh, I was in Vegas a couple weeks ago. Did it. And I'm like, okay. And then, so they also started asking me about how I knew him. And he had given me no coaching on who I was that day. Mm. Like, at first I was like his girlfriend. And then I was his friend. And But he didn't tell me how long I was supposed to have known him for. Like, Cause, and then they started asking me questions that I, and I didn't know the answer and I just kind of fumbled on my words. And then they finally got to the final question. They're like, okay, so Mr. O'Brien, like we got to ask you have drugs on you right now. And at this point he, like, we can't see each other. Like he's like two podiums away from me, like getting, okay. Off. And I like, honestly, I, I looked at the floor and I thought about it for about 10 seconds and they had to ask me again. And I said, yes, because oh. I knew that like, of all things, like lying to an agent was like, just going to dig me deeper in the hole. And like I said, my loyalty to him ended there. But uh-huh. at this point I was at least like home safely. And I was already getting, I was already caught. You think, okay, you already caught. And you didn't have anything on you right in that specific podium, right? Like, yeah, I did. It was on my body. Oh, you did. I thought, okay. I thought you were going to put it in the backpack and give it to him, but he, no, he didn't let me. He's like too okay. late. Now. Right. He said too late now. So that's what he meant. Okay. Yeah, so I have this like bulky, bulky bulge under me, and like they could <laughs> see it. It was so bosh. It was like I don't. know. It was like National Lampoon's Drug Drug Smuggling. <laughs> like, so bad. <laughs> so that was where um, clown. That was where that was where you uh, got in trouble. Yeah, but I didn't. Again, I didn't think I was in that much trouble because I was very ignorant to the severity of the crime. 
you know, like I, I know the punishment for your DUI is you lose your license, but I don't know how it works when you're on. Cause it, it seemed very complicated to me. Right. You know, not like I researched this before right. because I didn't know it was happening. It's not like <laughs> this is a planned thing. I'm like, oh, how much time could I get for this? You right. know, like there's none of that. Right. That's understandable. And I, yeah. And then I also believed him when he said if anything bad happened, like he would, you know, cover cover me and, and take care of me or what I don't know that that bullshit. But <laughs> um, and so I was like, okay, like I'm arrested, it's fine. Like I just have like a lot of explaining to do and I'm sure everything will be fine. Like maybe I'll pay a fine or like do community service or right. I didn't know. This kind of thing was like a, another world to me, um, but I was then placed in jail. And again, they like they like pick up the phone, and call a lawyer, and I'm like, hey, like this happened, and I was super casual on the phone because I was like, you know, I just wanted to go home, like right. when coming home. And they're like, um, you're not going home, like until someone lets you out. And that's when I was like, okay, this is not good. This is serious now. Yeah. Um, and did you, then did you get like bailed out? At, then like a trial. Or how did it go from there? Um, I got bailed out. My mom had to like leave her vacation and come oh. get me. Cause like with this kind of crime, like your friends just can't pay like a couple grand and get you out. Like this is like a very, very serious charge. And my bail was set for $50,000 and I had to have someone that would take on the role as an assurity. So allow me to live in their house while the court proceedings were finalized. And the only people that could do that were people that would put up their house. So that was like, my mom and my dad. Right. Um, I had to, they would only, they only let me out on bail after my parents agreed to set the bail at $50,000, but it didn't have to pay it. It was just like, okay, if Emily like messes up again, like we can take this from you. Right. So they were under tremendous stress because right. you know, they upend their lives. Like I had to move out of my condo back into my mom's house, which is like to me, like really embarrassing. And I was just like, <sighs> I spent a lot of time being angry and surrounding myself with people who helped me embrace that victim mentality mm. right so i was like right. yeah like this guy and like just trying to get even trying to get back trying to prove my innocence right but um i wasn't innocent like after i kind of i was on bail for about two and a half years and it wasn't until i got arrested for a second time uh, and when i was on bail yeah because i like breached my conditions because again i was like kind of being selfish and i, I was also trying to cope yeah, with, were, you like, were you like kind of denying it a little bit at that point? Like, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, this is unfair to me, stuff like that. Yeah. I didn't want to take accountability for my substance use. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I thought, like, you know, I was just doing them because I, I was just using like substances to cope and that wasn't getting me anywhere. And it was just making me more angry and more focused on getting back, getting even with him. And, you know, it, it seemed like an inconvenience. It was an inconvenience to me. I was like, this is annoying. Like I want to build my, keep building my career. Like this isn't me. That. So, um, it took about a year and a half before I kind of began to process it as something that I, I did play a role in. And that was the first step into healing. And then that's what also led to like, from the very beginning, I knew I wanted to plead guilty. Like I was just like guilty, like a hundred percent a, because I wasn't going to give any names, not that I knew them, but I wasn't about to Try to get a Sn lesson. Snitch, thinking. essentially. <laughs> I was just like, I'm guilty. I'm just like, I'm just like, can we just right. finish this? And because every day that I spent on house arrest, it just meant I had to travel like longer for work and like just more conditions. So I was like, the finer, the quicker I finish this, the quicker I can finish the this the whole thing yeah. and move on. Right. Yeah. So um, I finally got sentenced to four years in prison. Jeez. Yeah. What was that feeling like? Was that, was that like in a courtroom that you found out that information? No, this was about, about a year and a half into my sentence when we kind of were like, we knew like moving drugs over the border is like indictable and has a minimum, but I didn't, the amount that I had also like paid, played a role in the sentence that I got. Like, sure. They don't really look at like your, the fact that you weren't involved in crime before or anything like that, but cause it's like, it's, it's a minimum. It's a minimum for this charge. I mean, yeah. that makes yeah. sense. And so I was actually ready to kind of go at that point. Like I began to really think about all my, all my accomplishments and all the people that stuck by my side throughout this full time who, and who really believed in me. And then I was the one that wasn't really believing in myself. And after seeing like the tremendous support from my, from my friends and family and even like former employers and people that I'd worked with, mm -hmm. um, I knew that I could like, and, and on my past, like my past, like, 
jobs that I had. Like even like the fact that I'd volunteered as a kid and like, I'd always been kind and, and generous. Yeah. Clearly like that just kind of got the best of me. And, and then I got the best of me. Right. So I knew that I could, I, I don't know. I was also a fighter. So, um, I'm oh, sorry. <sighs> um, I was also a fighter. So I, I will use my fighting for good reason. Right. And I, I fought for myself instead of fighting against someone else. That's good. So, yeah. so yeah. So you went. So you went to was it jail, prison? What's the terminology? Prison, 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 prison. Yeah. yeah. I am so scared yeah. of like prison. It's just like I, I've I've never been there, but like it's a like it sounds terrible. You're you're stuck in there. Take all your freedoms away. Is it as bad as they make it seem in movies and what you hear about? Like, what is it like when you're in there? For me, like I started to reframe the whole situation before I went in, and I was like, listen, if I can go to jail for this, um then it's people just like me, you know, like it's must be people that just made mistakes. And I've done a lot of like traveling. And so I started to see this journey as just me going to another country with like okay. own sets of rules and, and culture and currency oh. and politics. Yeah. Right. So I wasn't really scared because I'd, I knew that I was a good person and I, I wasn't someone that started shit. And I wasn't someone that also liked to like to create drama and and be involved in it and i also knew that i had something on the other side often when there's conflict in prison it's because it's like a family in there and then there's people that don't really have anyone on the outside telling them to do otherwise right. so i can understand why these these things happen is because sometimes there's people that are in there for life or there's people that have no family support and so they get into arguments with people that they're close with in there or the or there's debts or something like that so it all really depends on on your own unique situation um but for me, like I knew that I could use like my, my patience. Cause I did have a lot of patience and I did have a, like a lot of kindness. I think that's just like how I was, how I was raised to always be kind and, and listen to people. And yeah, I mean, that's, that's a great attitude. You, you knew you were going there and you just were like, I'm going to make the best out of this. I'm going to yeah. see people in a positive light. If there's any situations that come up, I'm going to use my skills just to deal with it. And I'm going to get through it. I'm going to be positive about it. And it's not like you had 25 years. I mean, so it was four years that you were sentenced to, right? Did you, did you end up going four years? I went for, I'm still on my sentence right now, but I'm serving oh, a community. Yeah. So I did a year Okay. and six months in a halfway house. Okay. When I came out, I was like, still like, in the beginning, I was like, I was embarrassed to tell people that I lived in a halfway house. And then, and then I was like, you know what? Screw that attitude. Like <laughs> right for what you're believing in. And that's for like better reintegration system, like better reintegration, like programs and processes. Um, like there's so many things that I fight for now because of, of the experience that I, that I went through. And yeah, it was, were a lot of people that you met in there, like good people that you would yeah. hire one day. I mean, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And then I also really realized how lucky I was to have the support that I did. Um, you know, my parents were there to bail me out two days later. My parents right. were there to bring me to court. My parents paid my legal fees. Initially I am paying them back. Nice. But like, they're not just going to hand that to me. Like my parents, right. they want me to learn, you know, they're not like, Oh, no worries. Like they're like, no, like you have to take accountability. My substance use definitely affected them. And I had to hold up my end of the bargain. So yeah. that's a fair deal. It was a fair deal, very fair deal. So I still owe them some money for that. But the fact that they did it, the fact that they had the resources to do that, the fact that they would come visit me and, and I had like the courtroom was, was honestly full of people when, when I left. And even my like 90 year old, or I think she's eight, 88 at the time, but she was still there. My grandparents were grandma, there. Okay. <laughs> they drove like an hour to come to, to the court. And I was so, like, yeah, you, you had a lot of support. And I would imagine yeah. there, there's probably a lot of people in there that might not have that type of support. Yeah. They don't even know what support is. Right. They don't even know what support is. That's crazy. Yeah. They don't, even, they don't even like comprehend. So, and yeah, and you, you put my learned in there that you like feel for those people that you, you noticed that you were lucky that you had mm -hmm. support and the family and you noticed a lot of people made bad decisions just like you did, but mm -hmm. they just didn't have that type of support. And yeah. If anything, they had like, and they didn't have even like belief in themselves because mm -hmm. they were just like raised in a completely different way. And, or they are just subject to tremendous abuse. Like so many of the women I knew in there were there because of like violence against a partner who had abused them. Okay. So, right. yeah. So this, so this whole experience, it, it, you came out on the other end stronger, it made you smarter. Like, uh, I'm, I'm assuming you got cleaned up a little bit, uh, like, you know, no more, like not probably not as much cocaine. Do you still like drink it all? I guess you're still technically. Still cool, yeah. Okay. Uh, I wonder what would have happened if you would have made it through that, uh, customs. Do you think, 
Do you think your life would have, what do you think would have happened if you made it, it through? It would have been a think, lot worse. A lot worse. Like ultimately it might, it's probably good that this happened to you. If you want to look yeah. at it like that. Border security actually probably saved my life. <laughs> That's crazy. And uh, I'm assuming the guy was pretty mad at you, but who cared at that point? He wasn't mad at me actually, because no, no, like he just said he was sorry. And, but then he also was like really narcissistic. So he kept on like trying to talk to me when we were on charges. And I'm like, I can't talk to you. Yeah. Like, Please just like stop contacting me. Like that's how he was. He still tried to put me at risk again after we got arrested together. Yeah, I'm assuming like, this guy is, is this guy out of your life now. This guy seems like he needs to be gone. He's in prison. <laughs> yeah. Oh, right. Okay. So, geez, and is he there? Is he there like longer than you? Is he no, like, but he's more been there harsh thing? COVID prison, and that's not good. He's in a what? You said a COVID prison. Well, like yeah. So during COVID, like prisons are pretty much like maximum security. Okay. Oh, so it makes it like a tougher experience for the people that are in there. Yeah. And like at the end of the day, like I don't really wish harm on anyone because like yeah. there's so many people in like, like I know eventually he'll, he'll learn, but, and I forgive him for that, but I also don't, doesn't mean I want him back in my life. Right. And oh so, God. Like, don't bring this guy back in your life. Okay. No, <laughs> too many of them. Good ones out there. Yeah. So that's, that's, I love stories like that. Like I just had a, I just got married recently and I had a friend oh, of my, <laughs> thank you. And I had a friend at my wedding who uh, was always my drinking buddy and he, he stopped drinking and he's like so much better now. And I love the fact that he was like still just coming to the party, having a great time. Like I've always loved people who uh, either clean up or go through something tough and come out better on the other end. But then just still are regular. They don't, they're not like a weirdo cause they're sober. Or like they're just regular and cool. Mm -hmm. And I have always admired that and loved that. And I've actually hired a couple of people at my company who uh, have like been in jail before. And I always, I'll give yeah. you a shout out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and I, and I, and I think you probably, like, yeah, unless it's something like they don't want like reveals. Cause some people are like pretty private. Like I, I have a couple of people that I've, that I've worked with and they, um, you know, there's still like some security risk involved with their former partners. And yeah. So. I mean, he, was, he doesn't work for me anymore. His name, his name was Hayden. Um, oh, but he, he was, he, yeah, he was in jail uh, for like a year. And I don't know. I kind of liked that when I hired him. Cause I, I don't know when I've hired maybe like 50, 60 people, I have like 15 employees now. And I never like judged them on their backgrounds that much. Like, and that goes for criminal stuff, but it also goes for, if you went to college or not, I don't, there's not, I get, I don't have any hard lines of like, I want to look for this specific thing. Now, if it's experience or something, then sure. But you know, some people are like, I'm looking for a college degree. I'm looking for this. I'm looking for something very specific, no criminal background at all. But I'm like, I don't care if they have a criminal background. I mean, if it's, if it's theft from their employer and it was last week, okay, that's something mm -hmm. to consider. But uh, if it was like some type of drug charge from like 10 years ago, like I, I almost think like this could be an advantage if someone else won't hire them because mm -hmm. of that. And I will. And they're, and they're a great person and they're skilled at the job. It's almost like an advantage for me because if, if, if they don't have other opportunities, but yeah. I never, I never like to judge people based upon anything except for, are they going to be able to do good at this job now? And mm -hmm. I, 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 I'm curious if like other people are like that. And, um, but yeah, I want to talk about your popcorn company, yeah. but, but, uh, yeah. but that, isn't that one of your things with your company? You hire people who've been to, been to I prison. And boy, yeah. And so yeah. my community, it's like, it's such a collective thing, but, um, I did start it in prison cause I, I noticed how much like food brought people together It made people laugh together. Um, it created a sense of community and yeah. also helped people be creative. Like whether that was in like, I don't know, cooking muffins or cakes or like, so the thing that I really liked was seeing all the different popcorn recipes. Cause like, just to go back a bit, one of the things that led to my substance abuse, one of the factors was like the fact that I had like an eating disorder in the past. And so okay. I was like, do Coke and drink vodka. Yeah. And so going into prison, I was like, I don't want this to resurface. So I was really kind of looking for healthy ways to, to cope with like doing less, but still eating healthy. And so that, that was kind of the, the basis for it. And so we started like, I started out with like two recipes and me and my fellow inmates, we'd like work, we'd like brainstorm together and we'd, we'd share stories. Cause I was like, I, re I was really interested to know how the drug trade worked. Cause I didn't know anything about it like at all. And I learned more about it in prison than I did ever in my life. <laughs> you hear that, you hear that like jails, like a, a place where people learn how to do more crimes better. Yeah. Uh, but how well, they but got caught up in it and like how like just, really sad their circumstances were right. like that led them to do it, to do it, like right. to like their kid or something. And now they're separated <laughs> from their child. Ugh. And so that's when I knew I had to use my, my, 
my resources, my kind of my grit and like your skills, my family, my family wasn't embarrassed to sh in the fact that I could share my story with the public. Yeah. I really don't want you doing that. It's like a cultural Right, right. Like, it's like embarrassing. Let's just sweep it under the rug. But that's one of the things that I loved about you that you did. You made it part of your story. And mm -hmm. that's great. Like that is a, a lesson I think like any entrepreneur or any person can use. Like if you have a weakness, use it to your advantage. And it's an advantage. And it's, it's, yeah, it's not a weakness. Exactly. Yeah. And, and no one can take it from you. Exactly. And it almost, it's good uh, for other people, but it's also just so like refreshing to yourself. The fact mm -hmm. that you're not trying to hide anything deep down in the back of your head. You're not embarrassed about anything. You just get to freely be you and people love it. People are uh, gravitate towards it. And uh, so, so now popcorn, popcorn, um, <laughs> popcorn uh, you learn the recipes there. Like that's the part that you get to cook there. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Cause I was a low risk offender. So I was put in medium security and then eventually minimum. So okay. we lived in houses and we got like certain ingredients that we could have. And then we could buy popcorn and snacks off the canteen. Cool. So. Yeah. Comeback snacks I actually bought. Uh, I saw that. Thank you. You just saw it. I bought a, yeah, I bought a 10 pack. Of, yes. And that's like all the different kinds that you have. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to try it and uh yeah you want to see it back yeah let's see this is just like one of them great packaging i love it it's the newest packaging our first packaging was like whatever because it was more about build, building the the mission and and the brand and then now that we've kind of got pop more popular and we've scaled more then it's like time for an upgrade yeah what, what flavor is that right there that's a uh, double coated caramel oh okay, quite that, that, that'll be coming in my 10 pack it's coming in your 10 pack. Oh yeah, baby. Can't wait. Like popcorn, like you like, I, I never think of like popcorn as like things you can have for recipes. Like, I don't know what other recipes you learn there, but is it popcorn? I mean, it's just kind of like what you put on it. Yeah. Like it started out as like unique recipes, but then I really realized that popcorn was actually a common thing that a lot of people enjoyed. I also knew- Who doesn't like popcorn? Popcorn is amazing. Yeah. So I was like, okay. And I knew it was relatively low cost to start. Cause it's like popcorn, it's like wrong ingredients. It's air, it's, yeah, it's just like air and like a seed, right? Yeah, and I knew that, but what wasn't out there, like where my little kind of place was in the market was a popcorn company that actually tried to do something for society. And that is work on prison reform and reintegration. So and that, yeah, and that's, that's part of the mission of your company, right? Yeah, that's like so, basically why I started it. It wasn't because I wanted a, a food business. Like right. I, food was my enemy for 10 years. <laughs> Or like, it's a, that was like kind of, it's like a great place to be because right. it's yeah. like a common thing that yes, there are popcorn companies, but there aren't any that actually tackle this specific and very like important issue. And especially at a time when people are actually starting to listen 10 years ago, people didn't listen to this kind of stuff. Yeah. I love that. And for everyone listening, just so they know, comebacksnacks.com, right? That's where you get, that's where yeah. everyone can get it. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, I want to talk about the social part, but just overall, like a business, like business is going well, mm -hmm. starting to sell, sell some of this stuff. Yeah. And I like spent my, the whole first year out of prison, um, just like doing speaking engagements, like volunteering, getting, bringing like little sample bags to events. Um, just so, getting it And you are kind of like the brand, right? So when you were doing those speaking engagements, uh, you're just kind of building up recognition for yourself. And then that's like how you, I guess, monetize it, right? Is selling, the, is selling the popcorn. Yeah, for sure. And then helping, um, helping other people like who I was in prison with, like also learn how to share their story. Like if they want to, if they want um, to, right. Yeah. If they want to, for sure. Yeah. Because it's not just my story that matters. Right. You know, I just have a platform. Which right. I'm using it. Um, right. And I, I think, I think it's such an amazing thing. And I, and I, and if people don't want to, I, I guess I can understand, but I feel like it might be so f refreshing for them to be able to share it. And like a good thing, just, just, just like cathartic almost like being able to make it part of your story. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, so, so business is going well. You have some employees. Yeah. I have four now. Okay. That's a lot. Yeah, we just uh, hired a new one. And what, what, what do the employees do? Is it like, how do you get it manufactured? Um, so in the beginning we had like a really tiny kitchen, but then we had to scale. So I, we still do some, um, we do our event orders in house and we do our um, corporate orders in house. And then for our retail, we have like a popcorn helper. And so this staff manages like the deliveries and the accounts and then the, the kitchen stuff. Okay. That's, that you like, out, you like outsource it for big, for big, uh, like orders and everything like that, but they're yeah. using your exact recipe. I, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. So we send them like kind of what we need and 
and then they do that. But it has to like it has to be a company that like agrees with what we do and aligns with what we do. But like, right? Because we can't scale if we if we can't like get get more made. And like, I can't right. buy a million dollar factory. Right. Like, yeah. Like, you can make these partnerships in order to scale, but still maintaining your values and your growth. And that was how we were able to do it. Yeah. I mean, right. Scale yeah. Mission. Uh, yeah. The social part. Yeah. What I can talk about in a sec, but I just love like just in general building businesses. Like it's, it's, mm. that's my, it's my favorite thing. And it's so fun to scale. I mean, I started in like a small, uh, like, little building that I'm actually in right now, but across the way, I have like 12, 14 employees that are like printing shirts and shipping them out. And, uh, it's fun. It's like a fun experience to watch it grow. Uh, Yeah. Our business is uh, United monograms. It's actually like a girl's clothing thing. And monograms are like your, your initials on your clothing. Yeah. uh, uh, Business. Yeah. Business is going great. I saw that. Yeah. That's so cool. And, uh, yeah, it's been really, it's really fun watching it grow. And we do all our own, uh, manufacturing basically because we don't make like the shirts and the sweatshirts we get them sent in but then we decorate them in house and we basically have to because if we have 100 orders 200 orders thousand orders every single one has a different like initials so Mm -hmm. so we have like embroidery machines and printers and shippers uh Mm -hmm. operations manager all the customer service all that stuff and it's it's been so fun watching it grow from like three people to six people um and and you're in that stage so you said you make it like in your in your kitchen like let's say that's at your home or like are Oh no. Yeah. No, you got to follow the rules. And I, I didn't want to break any more rules. And <laughs> so I like, you have to have like your health inspection and you have to have like your business license. Um, right. You know, I, I, I always, I always thought the food, the, the food business, I always thought was interesting because I never got into it or anything like that, but right. You do have those things that you have to deal with, right? Like health and like certain codes and everything like that. Yeah. Uh, but that's awesome. And your four employees. Yeah. Uh, they, they, what do they help do? Um, they help in the kitchen and okay. with deliveries and I'm starting to kind of advance their roles. Um, so like, I want to like get them in front of people in front of customers so they can like have more like managerial skills. That's awesome. Me. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and I just like ask them if they want to do things. I don't like really limit them. Like, I'm like, Oh, like, do you want to learn this? And like some people are like, no, I, I like working in the kitchen. Okay. So, like, they, they, they like the quietness. I like, they just like to, they just like to pop. Pop, 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 yeah, pop. yeah. Yeah. I've actually had some success, uh, just hiring employees for like, they, they basically are like running the machines and printing shirts. And I actually look for people who enjoy having headphones in <laughs> and like not really talking to people that much. Like I have one employee yeah. who's been great. She's like, I used to yeah. work at target and I hated talking to people all the time. I love this job <laughs> where I can just have my headphones in. And like, you might not think that's like, sounds like a great person and they might not have a great interview or, or be the best talker, but like for this specific job, it's like perfect for them. Yeah. I found, so, that, I, mean, I found that works well. And it's all about listening and right. asking, right? It's not right. about telling you have to do this to make it. It's like, if you don't like listen to your staff, like right. you don't have a good relationship, I don't think. And exactly. you fail or like they'll quit. Yeah. Right. And that's always, that's, it's always the worst if that doesn't work out. Cause then, then it's like, you gotta get to replace somebody and all that. But, yeah. um, but where's like most of your sales? Like I just bought something from your website, very clean checkout process, by the way. So oh, nice. That was our new website. We launched it two weeks ago. Oh, no way. It was great. It was great. <laughs> is, is it like uh, is it Shopify or something like that? What is like the, uh, the back end of it? Squarespace. Oh yeah. Okay. Squarespace. Yeah. They're great. And I didn't even check. I'm sure I have an email in my inbox that says like, thank you for your order. Yeah, um, you- but, but I love that part. So like you said, you have like deliveries, like where are most of your sales from? Is it, is it, is it online? Is it more, more lo- right local now, retail? Okay. Cause with yeah. food, cause I, this is the first time I've ever bought popcorn online. I'm not going to lie. Like I love buying everything online. So used to shopping online. I think a lot of people are, but food, mm-hmm. food, I go to the store like, and I never think about buying food online unless it's like a grocery pickup. Um, so that's, I know that's a tough business getting your products into stores, right? Like, have you, you yeah. started, you started with that? Well, which is why it's so important to always be building your brand. Right. And always be like improving your packaging. Like we didn't try to get into retailers a year ago because it wasn't ready for the shelf. You know, like we had these clear bags and like the shelf life was not good like it was it was good like but it was only like for events and like personal deliveries and so like that would be consumed within a month and retailers Ooh, need long, longer shelf so. life is an interesting element of the food yeah. business like i have some bananas in my house right now and they're so brown and i'm, I'm just imagining being in the grocery store trying to sell them like so how do you how do you expand the shelf life is it just packaging or like some ingredients yeah it's packaging packaging yeah. 100%. And that can make a so- huge difference when you're selling to a retailer. It's like, you can leave this on your shelf for this amount of time as yeah. opposed to a shorter amount of time. That's interesting. 
Well, they won't take it if it doesn't have a long, longer shelf life, right? It, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. And it ha- I'm sure it has like a, have a little expiration date on there. Yeah. Yeah. That's so important. Nine months, that, nine months now. Nine months. That's great. Yeah. That's a long time. Yeah. That's, that's important. Um, so and yeah. We'll, so we'll still do some of the other flavors, but only if the people know, like, okay, don't like, don't be shipping that or like, you know, don't be storing this in your cupboard for six months. Like, right. as long as you know, then it's good. That's all right. right. So I got to eat, I got to eat that popcorn I got. Well, you have nine months. That one, okay. you're getting nine months. I'm more. sure it's delicious and I'll probably eat it right away. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> but that's awesome. Yeah. So the business part of it is fun. That's growing. You're in some stores. You have a brand new website. You're hiring employees. Um, what's your, where do you see like the vision of it? Do you, I know you said you can't get a million dollar factory right now, but mm. uh, is that something that you want to work towards or are you going to maybe outsource the production? Have you thought about that? Yeah, I think working with a co-packer is probably, co-packer. Yeah. Is probably the easiest way to, to scale it. Um, just for now, I mean, like nothing's off the table, right? But it seems like the way to manage our costs and still make a profit and still pay our staff a fair wage because I don't believe in minimum wage, um, and still get our margins right. Like everything's related. So the second you get a co-packer, you, gotta, you they take a chunk, and then the distributor takes a chunk, right? And then the retailer takes a chunk, right? So, and then so you can't have popcorn that's like twenty dollars bag, right? Right. right. So you have to make sure that everything works out, right? Because and you, and you do is, is make my staff is pay my staff less. Absolutely it, not. I, that's fair. So yeah, so you'll you'll make money uh, more if you do a lot of volume. Yeah, which is great. And and you as the face of it getting out there, I think that's a great a great a great strategy because people know your story, very interesting story. And like me, I just bought I just bought a ten pack, and uh, so that's like so so you got the manufacturing, the employee side down, and then for the marketing. Um, I know, I know you've been on all kinds of shows, been talking about it. You have a big social media presence. Uh, and I think that was what you said. That was one of your skills before was kind of uh, marketing and social media, right? Mm-hmm. So you got that part down. Um, do you do any other type of advertising? Have you got into uh, like ads or Facebook ads or any like paid ads or anything like that yet? Um, not yet. No, like That's... I think we, we're going to, we're going to do some banner ads for the holiday season, but as of right now, no, but like, I think the fact that I, that I am so like, active in my community and, and at events that's kind of like that's kind of like making people see you right yeah. instead of like the screen they're seeing you and you might not even uh like appreciate this as much as you should at this moment early on the fact that you don't have advertising you're still getting sales and, th- and that you're doing it that it's free that is so valuable like so my business 25 percent of our of our daily revenue goes to advertising on like Facebook ads and stuff like that. And we're always trying to keep it low, but at least that 25%. Actually, a few years ago, business got in trouble because that uh, that ad spend got too high. So basically, I mean, we have great marketing too, big social media presence, uh, but a lot of our, set, our revenue is driven by running ads. And uh, like 25%, like we have $1,000 in sales, $250 goes to ads. Like yours would be none of that. And that's that's an incredible thing. So like, I would, yeah, if you could just keep using you and your organic, that's the word in the marketing term would be organic marketing. Uh, That is such a powerful thing to not have to be able to spend money, be able to keep that margin, pay your employees more, still make some money yourself. So keep that going as long as you can. Isn't it funny how it's called organic marketing and it's like less, but organic food is so expensive. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess, I guess, I guess the organic means that so it's funny. made. It's made with organic ingredients, but yeah. right, it is funny. It is organic. <laughs> organic. That word's used in a lot of different ways. Um, and is that part of your popcorn? The uh, is it like the ingredients and stuff like that? Is that organic ingredients? Is that part of it, or is it more about the social? It wasn't the beginning until it was just it just got too expensive. I mean, so. that's understandable, and it's not like you're not. It's not like you're not doing good anyway i mean it's the whole thing is a social business so okay so that's like the business side and then i'm always i'm so i admit like my company i take great care of my employees i love every all my employees and customers like we're not a social we don't have a social uh connection that we're that we're attached to uh Mm -hmm. and a lot of companies that are i'm always fascinated like that one shoe company i think it's like you buy a pair of shoes they give a pair of shoes yeah uh there's a couple of companies like that yeah right and i'm always wondering like Geez, I hope that that works because that's going to cut your margins. Like that is, it's. I think it's it's difficult. It's respectable, but I would imagine it's difficult to be a company that has uh, also has social responsibilities because business is hard enough. It's hard enough to get started off the ground floor, be able to hire people, sell stuff, make a profit, figure out the margins, run all the details of it. That's hard enough. And if you want to add a good cause in there early on, I'm always like, 
geez, I respect people who, who are able to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. So like, like, how are you uh, uh, making this, this cause part of, of your company? Is it just by hiring people who have uh, criminal backgrounds or is there any other ways that you're doing it? Yeah. And like I'll sponsor certain events as well. I'll speak at events for free. Um, I also will, will do like kind of like sporadic fundraisers. Like right now we don't have anything like ongoing in place because we just shifted to our new model. So it's just too much of a business risk. And if I don't have a business, I don't meet my mission. Right. <laughs> right. So like we'll donate like when we can. And I always like love being able to like just throw money when I can, but it's like not something like, Oh, every, every bag had 10% goes like, we're not at that stage yet, but okay. we will, we will get there. Um, but for now it's just like, it's what, when we can, we can. Right. I mean, I mean, you got small enough margins. I would imagine you just talked about the distributor and all that. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, another 10%, that would totally cut your margins. Uh, yeah. But, I'd rather donate personally, to be honest, like, right, right. I mean, that's so cool. And, um, and so you said you do fundraisers like that is kind of just, a separate thing from your business, but it's just the whole, it's all the community of you, right? Mm-hmm. Like that is the coolest part. And what are some of the names of your snacks? Don't they have names that are, wasn't it? Con, con, what is it? Colonels or con? What is, what is that? Oh, brand Cons and like? Colonels was the original name. Cons and Colonels. Prison, but then like, and that was because I did like a collective survey of all the inmates. Like I did a, I a survey to the inmates. I was like, what did I call it? <laughs> and so we decided on that name, but then once I brought it to market, I really realized I didn't want to alienate us from them. And that's kind of what the name did. It also like perpetuated stereotypes. And I wanted people to that, A, that weren't working with the brand and people that were supporting the brand know that anyone can can make a comeback. Comeback so, Snacks is a great name, I think. I think it's, better than, better, I think it's right? better than and the it other name. Proves, I mean, like, it's, it's proof of where we are now. And it puts like a positive... Uh, shift like cons and kernels but then this is a comeback it's positive and then Mm -hmm. people do just a quick little bit more digging and they find your story and then it's like a comeback thing like everyone loves a comeback story everyone loves getting behind something like that i think it's a great name yeah it's way more relatable right and it rhymes and it rhymes comeback snacks and uh is some of the isn't some of the names oh no it's cons and kernels but like it's it's on your packaging right the fact that yeah Yeah, it's like, like um like Gen Pop is the name, general population. Okay, that's awesome. And then Jailhouse Cheese is one of them. <laughs> we had one called the Dillist. <coughs> What's that mean? That one's lemon pepper dill, just like the the illest. Oh, the dill. Okay, <laughs> the dillist. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I like that one. I'm not a big pickle guy. Is that in my ten pack? No, th- you're getting the caramel nine months variety. Ooh. So we have five caramel varieties. Okay. Those so sound, the those sounds, are for the shorter shelf life. That sounds so good. And I noticed uh, that you had great product images for your for your pictures. Product images as an e-commerce guy is so important. Like, we've always debated, should we have the shirt on a model or should we have the shirt lying flat? How should we do it? Um, your your product images looked amazing. There was the website was so clean. And uh, I saw like the little drizzle uh, on the popcorn. Well, and I was like, shirt. yeah, it'll be thrilled. <laughs> I was like, that, was that, are, the, are those uh, pictures that you took? No, we had like, um, we had like, we like to like hire, cause again, you have to invest. If you want to grow, you have to invest in, in aesthetic and absolutely. So, yeah. The last year, that's kind of what we, what we did. Like even the branding alone, like I didn't, I designed the logo. Like we, we, I worked with my friend, um, to like design the logo, the initial logo. So that was designed in prison through like a mail exchange. But then as we, the brand evolved, we knew we needed like a more professional look, like that's retail ready for people that don't know the brand that like are curious and and our, and see this like bright, nice, friendly packaging. And you're like, oh, this looks interesting, right? So that's so cool. Did you ever think about like putting your face on the packaging and doing like a personal branding of you? I think my face is on the packaging. It is. I, I mean, I didn't look that closely yet. <laughs> Not my real face. Okay. Well, it's my cartoon face. But you, but you are the brand. Like I already knew that part, but it's actually like on the packaging too. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> I, I love that. I love that. It's really. It makes everything you do. Uh, speaking and all these events that you do for uh, former people that uh, Brandon just showed me a picture of it. Come back snacks. Yes. <laughs> and we'll put, we'll put pictures and everything in the description, Thanks but so uh, okay. Much. That's okay. Yeah, that's you. Okay. I love it. Real chatter and caramel. Um, that love that. I've always, uh, you know, I don't do that with my brand and, and, and it actually it's funny at first when we first started our business, it's kind of me and my fiance, we kind of like, to pretend it that it was bigger than it was like we it was just kind of us two and we would be like we and like start acting like it was kind of bigger than it was um but now that 
it's like kind of taken off a little more. We do like a, a live show every week where we like show products and we're like the face of it a little more. But I've always loved brands that have like the person uh, be the face of it. And it's so cool that every time you do an event or anything, it's it's great. You're making a social cause, but it's also a little bit of promotion for, for the branding of, of your product. And it's just, I love how that all comes together. And Thanks uh, so much. yeah, I love what you're doing. I love what you're doing. I think you're doing a great job with it. Uh, really? where, where, where do you see the company in like 10 years? Like, I, want to be like, I know food is hard to be international, but I want to get there. What, I want, what, what makes food hard to be international? Just the distribution of it. Yeah. But like Pepsi's international, right? Yeah. And I think they have different, uh, like distributors, like they make the product across the world, but the key is having that. The key is, uh, actually Yingling beer where my, uh, it's where my girlfriend lives. It's like a popular beer and they, they grew where they were from in Pennsylvania and they made another plant down in Florida. And all the people say that they taste the one from Florida and they're like, tastes a little different. Like you make sure you got to make sure you don't lose your brand identity or your taste or your product. Uh, exactly. when you span, that's what makes like McDonald's. So, Great. It's like, no matter where you go in the world, you know what that thing's going to taste like. I want to be on airplanes. I want to be an airplane snack, ironically. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, airplanes. That would be great. Like you give the snack to people on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> that's that, that's a great, that's a great marketing. And I'm sure they'll buy it and everything too. Yeah. How, how long does like, how long will like my package take to ship? A um, couple days. Like okay. once I enter it in the system, they'll pick it up. What, it's Friday already. So I usually use FedEx or UPS, so they'll probably pick it up Monday. Okay. Yeah, shipping time is always like important when buying something online, which is actually a problem for my personalized clothing business because it always takes a little bit longer because we have to personalize it. So it take, our turnaround time is like eight to 10 days. And our main job for customer service is just like, it's coming, don't worry, it's coming. Um, so yeah, getting yeah. people stuff fast is important, which makes it, uh, which makes it harder. But uh, that's the fun of business, like and yeah. uh, all out, the good and the bad. Exactly. Going yeah. Pain. And uh, oh, you're doing such a great job. And I, that's the thing that attracted me to, to you the most is that message. I mean, you you hear about there's so many causes in the world that need to be handled, and I mean, there's like curing cancer, climate change, uh, all the different things, and you can't just everyone can't solve every issue. So the one that you picked is something that is uh, personal to you. And it's something that I've always loved. Like just because someone goes to jail doesn't mean their life is over. It doesn't mean that they can't ever do anything again. As a matter of fact, it might even be an advantage that they had to overcome a tough obstacle. And I've always loved people who make comebacks and have in and, and jail, in prison. And I think that's like one of the, one of the ones that we should not look down on people in society. And I think it's also like a cultural thing uh, with hiring and, and how you look at people. Like if you hear that somebody has a criminal background, I don't think your immediate thoughts should be like, Ooh, that's a bad person at all. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's like that? It depends on like, I think, I don't know. It depends how much, you know, right. really it breaks down to that. How much, yeah. you know, and how you've been kind of like raised who your parents were and what their values were. And right. Right. Maybe your job, maybe you're in law enforcement. I don't know. <laughs> like, <it could> be. <laughs> right. So, but ultimately, your your social mission. How would you define it exactly? Like, what is your objective with the social part of of the of this? I want to help create more jobs for people that are coming out of prison. So whether that's with my own company or with working with other companies to help them modify their HR policies, or working with governments who make the rules that say like insurance companies are allowed to have laws or rules that you know make fees higher for people that have records like and like rental applications oh if you record you can't live here so it's kind of like three-tiered um but yeah you can start change like just within one person one one's community uh one city or or one world right and i love so that i love that i love the jobs element of it because it's very specific it's not like oh i just want to change what people think it's no i want to create more jobs and i would imagine if if you will go speak to people like in jail or prison, just knowing that there's someone out there that cares about like what happens to them after they come out, knowing that they'll be able to be employed might make their time there better. Just, just, uh, overall, just a good thing. And I love it. I love what you're doing. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> any final messages or final thoughts? I mean, I love you your, I love your story. Back. You yeah. can do a comeback. All right. And tell follow everyone, and, and, and uh, what, do you, what do you want people to do? Follow you on Instagram, go to the website. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people can follow my own personal journey and, and the work that I do. Um, 
you know, in, in the community and also how you can make change in your own community. And then you can follow Come Back Snacks and see what we do uh, as a team. Awesome. So, I'm very yeah. excited for your future. Thank you Emily, so much. Emily O'Brien, entrepreneur, Come Back <laughs> Snacks, popcorn, so good it's criminal. And uh, I'm excited to get it. When I get it, I'm going to eat it. I'll post, I'll post about it. Oh, and, can't uh, wait. <laughs> And yeah, maybe we can like yeah, if our United Monograms account. That's our bigger one. Maybe we can put it on there too. So uh, yeah, awesome. Uh, I love what you're doing. So thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks. And keep doing what you're doing. Later. Uh, see ya. Have you ever heard a better podcast in your entire life? Take that, Joe Rogan. Best podcast you've ever heard. Get more podcasts right here. And subscribe to the show, too, while you're at it. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate you. Honestly, I love you.